And now joining us for more on the uh, New York Times' recently published and rescinded anti-Semitic cartoon is founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. Martin Sherman. Dr. Sherman, thank you as always for being with us. Good to be with you. All right, so my first, you know, what are your first reactions to, to the shooting? You know, obviously our hearts and our thoughts are with all of the victims right now and, and we should be doing more uh, to prevent this sort of thing. But, you know, what, what are your initial reactions uh, to the cartoon and to the attack in, uh, in California? Well, I would be cautious in relating the two causally, but there's a certain atmosphere. You know, and what's happened with the New York Times is of course very worrying, but not necessarily that surprising, uh, because the the paper has a long record of anti-Jewish and uh, and uh, anti-Israel uh, slants. Um, you, you know, it uh, well, it refused to publish the Goldstone report, which repudiated much of the anti-Israel findings of the committee that Goldstone himself headed, and he finally had to publish it with the, with the uh, the Washington Post. Um, so I, I don't think we should be surprised. Uh, it might be a little more strident, a little more uh, um, unabashed than you might expect. But I, I think it's par for the course. But I'm, I'm not sure that the, the New York Times, which is basically associated with the left, is causally related, uh, related to anti-Semitic uh, uh, attacks on the right. Uh, I, I certainly would reject... Well, I'm, well, well I, I would also like to maybe refrain from saying that you know, the shooter uh, in, in California has, has anything to do with the right wing either because he himself in his own manifesto, uh, which was actually published on the Daily Stormer, you know, said, I am not with the right, I'm not, a con I'm not conservative, I'm not a Trump supporter. He, say, he said it very clearly. Well, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, you know, the jury still might be out as to the exact motivations of this particular attack. But well, he uh, wanted to kill Jews. He said it quite uh, clearly. Uh, yeah, but you know what? What's behind that motivation? Well, he he well, believes that the Jews are replacing the European race, well, and we're orchestrating well, well, it well, with, well, with well, our you well, know. Well, it's I the think, global think, cabal think, over and over I think, again. I think, I think that draws us closer to traditional right-wing uh, anti-Semitism. But what I was going to say before is I certainly reject the claims that the Trump administration has any part in in. Uh, uh, encouraging this kind of activity. I think it would be difficult to find a more pro-Israel, a more pro-Jewish administration than the, than the current one. So, you, you know, I, I don't think we should be surprised at the New York Times anti-Semitism. I'm not sure that that's related, as I said before, well, to, to other outbreaks of anti-Semitism which are not left-wing motivated. Well, again, you know, speaking, if, if we're going to go down that route, you know, of left and right, you, again, we have not just not just the New York Times, which you of course just mentioned is is typically uh, aligned with the left, at, le at least in the public consciousness. So, but also at least for now, you know, in the 2020 national elections, like you just said, you don't think that there's been a more pro-Israel president in the last I don't know how many presidencies since Trump. Well, what about on the left then? So again, this is kind of I'm, I don't I'm know if sure, I would. I'm not sure I'm following, but but I must say there is a counter argument, which says. Uh, that this, these attacks on the right have been prompted by the Trump admi administration being too pro-Jewish. You know, I was just mm. on a, re a recent interview when someone brought this up and said that you know, if you if you if you want to connect the Trump administration with these attacks, perhaps what is true is the the the, the converse causality. Not that Trump is inciting right wing. Uh, right-wing or encouraging right-wing anti-Semitism, but that his pro-Jewish stance is enraging uh, right-wing uh, right anti-Semites who feel that they need to act. So what's the solution for this? Because how do we, how do we stem this type of well, hatred and this type of violence? Let, 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 let me say one thing. I, I, I think that obviously you know, anti-Semitism is one of the most ancient ailments of the human of, of, of the human race, but, mm. but, but I think Israel can do a lot and a lot more because I think a lot of the anti-Israel and therefore the anti-Jewish, the Jewish sentiment is related to ignorance. And you know, I don't want to sound like old Cato saying the same thing over and over again, but I've been saying time and time again that if Israel were to invest 1% of state budget in public diplomacy in presenting its case, in dispelling the anti-Jewish and the anti-Israeli myths, uh, which are all mendacious, or largely mendacious, uh, I think we could go a long way towards um, uh, towards fighting the ignorance that breeds some of the anti-Semitism. I don't know if we can eliminate but, it completely. But again, but, doesn't, but doesn't that play into that whole global cabal 
uh, you know, sure libel that, as just well? To, to, I sort of, but in many ways, you know, some of this anti-Semitism is related to, to Israeli actions itself. I mean, the Isra Israeli detract detractors don't have to do anything except quote Ehud Barak to portray Israel as a fascist, racist, corrupt entity, or Peter Beinard, who is uh, continually uh, assailing Israel. All he does is quote Israeli sources. So, so in many ways, the self-criticism, the, the exaggerated self-criticism of, of Israelis are portraying Israel in such a way that it becomes a target for, for, for anti-Semites who basically are replacing the, the hatred of individual Jews with the collective Jew Israel. And that, of course, then uh, spills over into anyone who associates itself with, with Israel. All right, well, we'll have to see what happens with this and what will happen with the shooter and, and you know, kind of how we progress from here, as you said, to look deep, more deeply at some of, his, uh, some of his motivations. Thank you so much for coming in, Dr. Jeremy. Okay, thank you.